Welcome back. I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage, and today we're going to look at four freaky fertilizers. Around my feet here, I have four mysterious bags. Each contains something very strange, which you may never have considered using as a fertilizer for your garden. But all of them work well and are readily available and are freaky. Let's take a look at what's in bag number one. Anybody know what that is? That is seaweed, right off of the beach. Seaweed is one of the best fertilizers that you can put in your garden. They sell bags of kelp meal from California, ground up kelp, to add minerals to the garden. But if you live anywhere near the ocean, you can pick up some for yourself. And this is how you use seaweed in the garden. First thing you do is give it a rinse because it's coming out of the salty ocean and we don't want that much salt in the garden. Now this doesn't apply all the time. I have actually mulched beds of tomatoes with seaweed and the little extra salt doesn't seem to bother them and it probably makes the tomatoes taste better. A little bit of extra salt in the ground actually improves the flavor of tomatoes according to some studies. But all I'm gonna do is give it a a brief wrench just to get the extra salt off of it. And I'll do that again just in case we have anything really sensitive to salt. Along with the minerals of the ocean, we have lots of salt. But once you rinse the salt off the outside, I have rather as many as 90 minerals that can be contained in seaweed. So this is a source for all kinds of excellent stuff for your garden. You might think of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Those are your main minerals. But what about things like cobalt and manganese? Little bits of nutrition that the plants can really use for specific functions that they might not be getting very much of in the soil. So when you add some seaweed, you're getting all that good stuff. And if you're not near the ocean, you can always buy yourself some kelp meal, which is awesome. Let's go find a place to feed this to. This is a cassava, also known as manioc or yucca. It's a root crop from the tropics, which is where I live. And I planted this in here a little while ago. I am going to give it a boost of seaweed. This will give it lots of extra minerals and it's going to break down into the soil. The earthworms and everything will eat it over the season and it'll do well. You can also take the seaweed and make rings around fruit trees. Uh, you know, if you've got an apple tree in your backyard and you're anywhere near the coast, put a few handfuls in there. You can throw the seaweed directly into your compost piles. I do that all the time. You can stir it into a bed when you dig a new garden bed. If you have kelp meal or if you have seaweed, just go ahead and dig it right into the bed. And uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna put those minerals into your soil and then your plants will take them up. And then when you compost those plants later, they have those minerals in them. And the compost will have more minerals than your land would have otherwise. A lot of times the land doesn't have all the minerals that it needs. You may have an area that's short on selenium and you think, man, I'm gonna make a ton of compost piles and I'll just keep feeding the ground. Well, if the ground doesn't have selenium in it to begin with, you're not gonna have selenium in your compost. But if you throw in a little bit of seaweed, you're basically gonna have tons of minerals in your compost. It's gonna be better for your teeth, for your hair, for your organs, for everything. And you actually start cycling minerals through your system that wouldn't have been there before. Let's take a look at another bed where I simply mulched with seaweed a few months ago. This garden bed I planted and mulched a couple of months ago and now that the rains have started, everything is starting to look good. As you can see here, this is a beautiful cauliflower. I have multiple cauliflower coming in and they're looking very pretty. And you can see these leaves look nice and healthy and happy, even though it's the middle of the day right now and they're looking a little bit wilted. It's a happy plant. 
And part of the reason for that is because right here, see all this seaweed? When, uh, when I did this bed, I mulched it pretty well with seaweed and a lot of it has broken down and gone into the soil. The earthworms have carried it down. There's a little bit left, but I have this nice, good looking stuff that's broken down here. And the seaweed is giving minerals to this bed. You can just take it, rinse it, throw it on the ground as a mulch, and use it as the top layer of any one of your garden beds if you don't feel like digging it in. You can also blend it up in the blender with some water and use it as a foliar feed for house plants or anything you want. That gets it to it very quickly. But I like to use the mulch, throw it down on the ground, and over time, I know that this bed is gonna have more minerals than anything else around here. And it's all thanks to that seaweed. And there's your first freaky fertilizer. Let's take a look at bag number two. Let's see what we have in here. What are those? Those are rabbit pellets, which is mostly alfalfa. If you have uh, guinea pigs or rabbits or hamsters or that sort of thing, you've probably got access to alfalfa pellets. Now alfalfa pellets are a little bit expensive, but they are a fantastic fertilizer for a couple of reasons. One, they are loaded with nitrogen. Alfalfa is a nitrogen fixing crop. Alfalfa is a nitrogen fixing crop. And that means that alfalfa has a relationship with certain bacteria in the soil. And those soil bacteria live on the roots. They make little nodules on the roots and they provide nitrogen to the plant. They take atmospheric nitrogen and they turn it into a usable form that the plant can take up. The roots can't take nitrogen right out of the air, but the bacteria can and the plant gives them a little bit of sugars from the sunlight that it's capturing and they in return give the plants nitrogen. Well, when you harvest that alfalfa, the leaves are loaded with nitrogen. And so alfalfa pellets are a nitrogen booster. If you've got them and your plants look like they need a little pick-me-up, you can go rob the guinea pig cage and throw some alfalfa pellets around. I'm doing this on some of my plants. Let's find something that looks a little hungry and give it some alfalfa pellets. These are some watermelons here that one of my kids planted. They've had a little bit of compost, but watermelons like to get running fast. We want them to outrun everything. So let's give them a little bit extra. How about some rabbit pellets? Rabbits are fast. Maybe you can be fast too. I'll throw these on the ground and then it's going to rain and water them in. Now, if you have a problem with rabbits and that sort of thing like living in your garden area, you can always dig these into the ground first. Make a new bed, throw a few handfuls of alfalfa pellets through and you know, just till them into the ground and let the soil life break them down and then you don't have problems with animals coming and chewing them up. There's something else that's magical about alfalfa, other than the nitrogen, which is great for getting plants running. Alfalfa also has some sort of a magical compound in it, which causes plants to grow. And I don't remember if it's a hormone or whatever, but they've done tests where they take some alfalfa and mix it into an area. And there's something in there that boosts plant growth. And some of you scientists out there might know what that is, but all I know is it's really good for making plants take off. So if you've got some rabbit pellets, maybe uh, one of your kids left a bag of uh, feed out in the rain and it's spoiled, it's not a waste. Throw it right in your garden and you will grow some beautiful plants. Let's take a look at bag number three. What mysterious substance could be hiding inside of this innocuous plastic bag? What, what is that? Yeah, I know, you're thinking this is a joke right now. That's dog food. Yep, that is dog food. Where I live, when the dog food gets busted up when it's being imported, they rebag it and they put it in these little plastic bags and they sell it for cheap. And dog food is actually a really good fertilizer. But why is it such a good fertilizer? Well, dogs are mostly carnivores much like cats. Cats are a true carnivore, dogs are sort of an omnivore, but they need a lot of protein. Protein is predominantly comprised of nitrogen, and nitrogen is the main thing plants like to eat. That's not all the proper scientific jargon, but you get the idea. 
when you have this dog food, you might go to the, okay, you might go to the organic section of Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you have available there, and they sell bone meal for your plants, and they sell blood meal for your plants. Those are slaughterhouse wastes. A lot of that stuff also goes into dog food. Yeah, there's probably some GMO grains or whatever else mixed in there, but uh, that stuff's pretty much gonna break down in the soil. I'm not worried about it. The uh, soil is really good at getting rid of that sort of thing. And a uh, farmer that I know of in Tampa, a guy named John Starnes, has been using dog food to feed his yam beds and to start new gardens for a long time. And it makes for some beautiful, beautiful growth. It's ridiculous. So you might go and buy like bone meal or blood meal, or you might buy a bag of dog food. Animal byproducts. Heck yeah, plants love to eat animal byproducts. So I've been throwing these on my yam beds, and this year I just stirred them into the ground and I planted yams on top of the dog food. I dug it in first. Now, you, again, you might have to dig it in the ground if you're going to plant because some animals are gonna to wanna to come along and eat it. But if it gets in the ground and it starts rotting, it's going to feed the plants all through the season and uh, you know they'll have really nice bark. Now let's take a look at bag number four. Let's see what we have here. What sort of a, oh look, it's like a sub sandwich or something. Maybe it's a sausage. What in the world is that? That there is a gar. A gar is a type of fish. And fish is a fantastic fertilizer. Let me show you how to use this thing. Right here, I'm gonna put in a hill of pumpkins. I've been planting pumpkins, and I love growing pumpkins. And one thing pumpkins love to eat is fish. Y'all have probably heard the story of how the Indians taught the pilgrims how to bury fish underneath their corn to get a good yield. It really, really works. It actually doesn't just work with fish. It works with any kind of meat. Uh, one of my readers just sent me some pictures where she buried a rotten chicken carcass underneath one of her pumpkin vines. And she had another pumpkin vine next to it, which she didn't bury it under. And you can see a huge difference between the two. All I'm gonna do is dig a hole deep enough that I think the animals are probably not gonna smell this fish. And then I'm gonna throw the fish in the hole. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Now right there is my pumpkin mound. And I have right here some blue Hubbard squash, which are one of my favorite winter squash varieties. You can do this with squash, you can do it with pumpkins, you can do it with just about anything. Bury some meat or a fish in the ground, plant on top of it. They will find that fish. Those roots will run down there and they'll get what they need. Fish has the minerals of the ocean. It's got all the minerals that it took to make a fish, which is plenty of minerals. And there's plenty of nitrogen in there. If you go to the store, you can buy fish emulsion, which is basically cooked down fish guts and that sort of thing. And it smells amazing and it'll attract every cat in the neighborhood, but it's a fantastic fertilizer. A friend of mine told me the way that she grew beautiful, beautiful strawberries was fish emulsion. Taking all those minerals and all that stuff that it took to make a fish 
and you're feeding it to the strawberries. I hope this has helped you see that fertilizing plants doesn't have to be just a matter of going out and buying a bag of 10, 10, 10. There's so many different things that plants can use that we have in our normal day-to-day -day life. Even some really crazy stuff. Uh, next time you have a bag of spoiled dog food or the uh, gerbil food gets left out in the rain, or you go fishing with the kids and you realize you don't really want to uh, scale all those two inch bluegills, go ahead and uh, recycle them back into the soil and you're gonna grow some beautiful plants. Thanks for joining me, I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage.